Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to answer a simple question. Can the super smart aliens from outside of our solar system actually see our planet Earth in the same way that we can see some of the other exoplanets? In other words, will someone one day find our world, and if so, how can we actually find out if this will happen? Welcome to What The Math and enjoy the video. <laughs> So what exactly are we going to talk about today? Well, it's actually a very cool concept known as Doppler spectroscopy. This is essentially how we've discovered that at a distance of about 4.2 light years away from us, there is an exoplanet orbiting around Proxima Centauri. We were able to actually detect it using spectral um, Doppler spectroscopy because as this planet orbits around the Proxima Centauri star, um, every once in a while it makes the star move a little bit different. Now let me just show you what I mean by this by using our own sun and our Earth and basically showing you what actually happens. So let's actually go into the new simulation here. We're going to zoom in on our own sun and what we're looking at is this, total velocity. Now, if I were to place the Earth at a distance of where Earth is, this is what happens. You'll notice that the total velocity of our sun starts to increase. Now, why is this happening? Well, because Earth is also pulling on the sun. Earth has gravity. It doesn't have a lot of gravity, but it does have some gravity to pull back on the sun as the sun pulls on Earth. And so Sun and Earth obviously have some kind of a gravitational relationship here. And if I were to accelerate time and make Earth orbit, um, let's just say this is going to be like several months a second, uh, you will notice that this graph, this particular shape, will start sort of turning into a kind of a um, sinusoidal or uh, a repetitive pattern. So here, the Sun gets to a velocity of about uh, I think the maximum was about uh, 0.2 meters per second, and then it drops down again. Now, how is this going to help us find exoplanets? Well, the thing is, there's something called Doppler shift effect. Doppler shift refers to the idea of uh, a wave, so uh, an actual light wave, and here's actually a picture for you, uh, a light wave propagating away from the source. Now, if this source is moving away from you, it will be what's called redshifted. It will turn a little bit more red where the actual wavelength will actually increase and the sun will look a little bit more red than it should. If the object moves toward you, it will look a little bit more blue. But because in this situation, sun right about now moves toward us, it becomes more blue shifted. Now it's becoming red shifted. Right now it becoming, it's becoming blue shifted again. And right about now it's going to be red shifted again because earth is pulling it on it in this, this, this direction and it's moving the sun away. And when it's on this side, when earth is right about here, it's pulling on the sun in this direction and the sun is moving toward us. So that's essentially how we found um, the Proxima Centauri exoplanet and many other exoplanets as well. But what will actually happen if we put more planets here? So what would an alien see? What would, uh, let's just say, for example, there's these aliens living on Sirius and they're looking at our sun right now and they want to see if there's actually a habitable planet where they can actually settle. Well, let's place Mercury. We're also going to place Venus and Mars here. So the four terrestrial planets. And once again, take a look at the total velocity graph uh, that uh, is created. And you'll notice that the, the shape of this graph will now change a little bit. It's going to be a little bit different. It's a little bit more funky. It has uh, different planets orbiting at different periods and redshifting and blue shifting the sun a little bit more. Which suggests that if you're an alien looking for an Earth-like planet from the outside of solar system, you will have a lot of trouble figuring this out. The motion that you see here is kind of unpredictable. Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's going to be over here and sometimes it falls down over there. So here it's going to be very challenging to actually detect anything. And what makes this even more challenging for our super smart aliens outside of our solar system is the planet Jupiter. Now I'm going to place Jupiter at a distance of about four-ish astronomical units and just watch what happens to that total velocity graph. It is going to explode. Jupiter pulls on the sun so much that its velocity increases by 100, more over 100 times more than it does from Earth, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. As a matter of fact, if I were to actually open this up as a separate graph, if I were to show it to you 
in, uh, in a larger time span, you'll notice that it's very obvious for the aliens that there's exoplanet here because our sun is redshifted and blue shifted quite a lot by Jupiter. But the terrestrial planets are close to being invisible. As a matter of fact, there's almost no way for these aliens to see them. You can only kind of detect them here. There's like a bit of a... It's not a perfect curve, so it's it, there's a bit of a, uh, a, a smudge here. And a little bit of a different shape here. And this would suggest that maybe there's other planets. But what kind of planets would be very, very difficult to sort of predict using this particular method. And if I place other gas giants, like if I were to place Saturn... Uranus and Neptune as well, this will change even more. So this will actually increase even more and uh, the actual pattern here will be very, very hard to predict. As you can see, it didn't even go down too much. It didn't actually go as low as before and now it went a little bit lower. So, but this actually can be used by those aliens to see if there's other exoplanets around our star and this will be quite easy to see because uh, even our, with our technology, we're able to see um, the Doppler shift effect of as low as 2 to 3 meters per second, or even lower than that. We, we might not be able to see Earth, but we'll definitely be able to see some of the larger planets. And so this is sort of where um, Earth technology would be able to detect exoplanets. And obviously pl uh, planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus would actually be able, uh, we would be able to detect them very easily because the Doppler shift effect here would be quite predictable. But because there's so many of them, we would have trouble figuring out how many and what exactly they're doing and at what orbit away from the star they are. But we would be definitely be able to see the largest one. So the peaks here, the highest peaks, represent Jupiter. And this is how we would be able to detect not only the fact that there's Jupiter around our sun, but also what is the actual mass of Jupiter. Because we can sort of look at the star, we can actually look at our sun, and using its colors and its emissions, estimate its total mass. And also using its luminosity, estimate its total mass based on what we know about other stars. If we find the mass of the sun, and if we find the period here, and specifically we're talking about something like 10 or so years for this particular system, because this is like 10, um, 10 years apart, we would be able to then uh, find out uh, where exactly in the solar system this Jupiter is located, and then using what we know about the star, estimate if it is inside the so-called um, habitable zone, this green zone where we can maybe have liquid water. But uh, based on this system, we would right away find out that it's actually outside of the uh, habitable zone. It's actually right there. And uh, because of the way it acts on the sun, because of its mass, we'll be able to also predict that this is a quite a massive object. And we will also be able to even predict its mass. And essentially, this is how scientists today use uh, this technology and use this technique to discover many, many different exoplanets orbiting around the stars. So basically, from a distance, we look at the star that is right there and we see the changes in color. So if it's blue shifted regularly and if it's red shifted regularly, we know that there's a planet orbiting around it. And depending on the amount of redshift, we can estimate the mass. And depending on the period, we can actually estimate where this planet is located. And that's really it. It's really that easy. Now, if you actually one day want to try this yourself, uh, well, it will be very difficult because you do have to have very, very accurate ability to detect color from a specific star and then obviously measure the changes in that color. But we today can use various space telescopes to do this quite easily by just looking at the star for several months, for several years and uh, seeing how the color changes. And it's a pretty cool technique. It's actually a very awesome scientific technique that is used uh, quite a lot in astronomy. Anyway, so that's what we call Doppler spectroscopy. And this is how we found many, many different exoplanets orbiting around different stars out there. And it's actually a very, very accurate method, and it is used uh, quite a lot by NASA. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you learned something from this video, and hopefully you'll share this with your friends, or possibly someone who you think might enjoy watching these videos. If you still haven't subscribed, don't forget to click the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Give me later, and as always, bye-bye. And so if you are an alien looking at us from far, far away, you might actually be able to find Jupiter. And you might even come here to claim it for yourselves. But please don't come to our world because we are very likely going to be destroyed by you if you come here. Because, you know, science fiction is usually correct about this kind of stuff. Anyway, see you later, guys. Stay safe, avoid aliens, and as always, bye-bye.